I think there's a chance that you go down to 3.8 percent. Yeah. And the reason for that, you see the four week moving average of claims going down. You also see that we haven't been creating a lot of jobs. The household survey used to compute the unemployment rate was basically weak in the last two months. In fact, averaging a decline of 17,000, while the establishment survey gave you an average of 150,000. You're going to see some convergence. And so as you see more jobs being created in the household survey, guess what? That puts downward pressure on the unemployment rate. Uh, unemployment rate of 3.8 percent is something we haven't seen since the year 2000, I believe. And before that, you have to go all the way back to the 1960s. If we do see 3.8 percent as an unemployment rate, Great news means a lot of people are working. What, what does that tell us broadly? Do you have any concerns? I don't have as many concerns as some people might have because certainly there's a lot of academic research that finds that the conference board's presence situations index tells you how tight labor markets are. Right. And when you look at that index today relative to 3.9%, it's not as high as it's been in the past when you get a 3.9%. So what does that tell you? Labor markets are tight, but not as tight as a 3.9% or even a 3.8% would suggest relative to history. So there is more slack. And I love to look at the job openings rate, but I also love even more to look at the job hiring rate because there's some information out there that the job openings is firms really fishing for resumes. You sure. really should be looking at the jobs hiring rate. That tells you more about how tight the labor market is. All right, Joe, when you're looking at this from the investor's perspective, it looks like a great news on the economy, mm -hmm. uh, no matter what number we actually get seeing today. But then you have all of these other talks we started the hour with, with trade talks, all the big concerns, everything that happened yesterday, uh, even throwing tariffs up against some of our best trading partners. Mm -hmm. And you've got the whole issue of what's been happening in Europe. So w when you add those things together, what, what do you do when it comes to your investments? That's a great question. That's the tug of war we've seen all throughout 2018, where when you look at the fundamentals, they continue to improve, right? We've seen uh, earnings growth that's accelerating, revenue uh, revenues that are accelerating, uh, CapEx that's expanding. Uh, we'll have the whole discussion on the tight labor markets and all the benefits that that brings to the U.S. economy. On the other side of that, it's that investors have been pretty much whipsawed by all these macro risks, right? whether it's uh, steel and aluminum, China trade, Iran nuclear, Italian elections, steel and aluminum again this week. I think the second half of 2018 is going to be more, it's going to be better for equities. And I think we're going to see equity markets higher because the underlying fundamentals continue to improve, yet the market gets no credit for it. As a result, we're seeing PEs at much more reasonable levels for, you know, a, a, a late cycle environment. So all in all, I think it's bullish. I think investors are right to be pricing out these risks. Uh, because I think you have to understand what potential impact these trade spats could have. But, but it's having less and less of an impact as we go. This morning, you might not have anticipated we'd see the futures, the Dow up by 130 or 140 points this morning after what we heard right. yesterday. What's the explanation yep. for that? Yeah. I think investors maybe just simply have, you know, kind of worry fatigue, right, that we've looked at all these issues, we've priced them out, and, you know, let's face it, there's no president or policymaker out there that wants to own the legacy of creating the second Smoot-Hawley tariffs, right? The 1930s, where global trade grinds to a halt, it falls by 75 percent, it exacerbates the Great Depression. I think if we put this into context, it says that, you know, these trade spats might be inflationary, right, because it's going to sort of, I think, lead to higher prices. But it's not the, it's not the end of this economic cycle. I don't think Washington, D.C. is going to dictate, you know, the, the end of the Guys, end I've of the read cycle. about a dozen reports this morning from Wall Street economists about this trade thing. There are three themes. One, nobody says this adds to jobs. Net negative for right. jobs in the strong job markets. Two is that the macro effects are minimal at the current levels of trade and retaliation. Okay. Three, everybody says it gets worse if we escalate further. And there is some bracing for that $50 billion of tariffs on June 15th. So a week will not go by, or just about a week will go by, before the market has to think about this again. But those are three consistent themes throughout right. the e economic view of this uh, action here. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.